Greetings fellow members of the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome back to the joy of unpacking. We're here almost at the end, the room is almost empty, most of my stuff has moved next door into my office and I'll show you that when it's all set up. But this is going to be the last episode of the actual unpacking and today we're going to look at some of the really old role playing games that I've got. Um, they're really what got me into the hobby way back in 1978. Oh, so long ago! It's unbelievable! Yes, that's when I started with a game called Empire of the Petal Throne, which I've already showed you in this series. Let's have a look at some of the other stuff in the rest of these boxes. Well, I've already started unpacking this box and it's got some great stuff in it. Um, here we've got uh, Call of Cthulhu. This is the uh, edition that Games Workshop brought out with when at one stage they were bringing out hardback editions of these role-playing games. So this is a pretty early edition of the classic Lovecraftian uh, role-playing game. It's even got colour plates in it. Very nice indeed. Here, of course, the original Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader by Rick Priestley. A fantastic book, a wonderful collector's item. Um, this is my copy that I bought when it was first released and I was lucky enough to get one of the copies that didn't uh, fall out of the binding because this does have a notorious problem of falling out of the binding. But there's some great artwork in here, really atmospheric stuff. The first iteration of the beloved game, Warhammer 40,000. There it is. Of course, here are the classics. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. After Empire of the Petal Throne, I quickly got into Dungeons and Dragons. Got the basic set, which is in here somewhere, and I'll show you. And then moved on to Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, as they were released. So the Player's Handbook came out first. Here it is here, and I remember waiting with breathless anticipation until the Dungeon Master's Guide came out. Very sadly, these aren't my original copies. Um, I foolishly went through a time, I think in my 20s, where I sold a lot of stuff, and I sold my original Advanced D&D books, which was a really stupid thing to do, but of course, later on, I re-bought them all on eBay. So what a shame, but anyway, they're still good copies, and uh, Absolute classics. Here's something that not many people have, the Indiana Jones role-playing game by um, TSR. This wasn't very successful for them. In fact, it was all a little bit of a farce. And in fact, if you're familiar with the Diana Jones Awards for Excellence in Gaming, their award is actually made up from some of the uh, pieces that came with this game. Oh, curses, I can't find them, but originally it did come with a set of stand-up counters that you could use to play the game, and one of them had Nazi with a little TM symbol next to it. Yes, brilliant. Um, so there it was. Uh, this was like a sort of odds calculator thing that probably came in a magazine or something, I don't know. But uh, I think I tried to play it once. That was about it, but it's a, it's a nice little oddity from the history of role-playing games. Here's another one uh, called Chill, which was um, a horror role-playing game with a slightly lighter feel than um, Call of Cthulhu. And it has lots of adventures in there. Oh, here it is, folks. Look. Oh, my original Dungeons & Dragons set. As you can see, it's very worse for wear. My goodness. But uh, this was pretty exciting stuff back when I was 12 years old in 1978. And uh, it got a lot of use, as you can see. Oh, I've got a few Dragonlance modules in there. Oh, look, a Conan module as well. Now, here's the original rule book. Yep, back in the very, very simple days. And, uh, oh, it's all bits and pieces look old lands that I created and probably character sheets and I've got quite a few of these old things from the old days. Um, oh, there's the uh, intro piece from the Tomb of Horrors module. And this is back in the days where, look, even using a typewriter to write things down. Incredible. And there's a few of the old dungeon geomorphs in there at the bottom as well that you used to make dungeons out of. There's lots of this classic D&D stuff, Dungeon Master's screen. This was a two-hit thing that came in Dragon Magazine, I think. I've got an original copy of Metamorphosis Alpha. Um, I actually bought this one online, and it's a signed copy James M. Ward there. Signed it in 84. 
that was the precursor to Gamma World. And some other things, uh, old Judges Guild modules, Dark Tower, that's a bit of a classic. Wow, there's so much stuff here. More chill adventures. Uh, and we start getting down into modules, and I've got all these in individual plastic sleeves to preserve them. On player character records, Dungeon Master's Adventure Log, and a lot of these modules. A lot of these I re bought again when I um, got past that silly little phase where I sold a lot of things. I used to own all of them, so I went back on eBay before they were really expensive and managed to rebuy everything that I had because I knew that uh, it was worth getting them back before they became too expensive. So that whole box is full of old adventure modules. There's a beauty. Expedition to the Barrier Peaks. Absolute classic there. There's B2, Keep it the Borderlands. Should be some of the old single colour ones in here. Um, oh, there we go. Vault of the Drow. It was very exciting stuff when it came out. Uh, Dragonlance modules. I'm sure there's a Tomb of Horrors in here as well. And down at the bottom, Deities and Demigods. And this is my original copy. Um, I kept this one because it's one of the earlier copies that has the Cthulhu Mythos and also the uh, Michael Moorcock stuff that was taken out in later editions. Here's a strange little acquisition. Um, I mentioned the Dragonlance modules and I do have all the uh, copies of those, the large ones, but at one stage I was doing some collecting and before I got the copies of the large ones back I found this listing for all of the Dragonlance modules and I thought, oh great, I'll buy that, that seems incredibly cheap. But what I got in the mail were these strange beasts, Volume 1 and Volume 2, and if you open them up, it's mini versions of the Dragonlance modules. Now, I don't know who was responsible for making these, but they're utterly bizarre. You've got to have the most incredible eyesight to read the little books. Um, let's have a look. As you can see, they're pretty tiny. I mean, who could read that? You'd have to use a magnifying glass. Um, but I kept them, of course, they were an oddity, and when I looked in the fine print of the listing, it did mention that they were small. I'd missed it completely. So I ended up with this two-volume edition of all the Dragonlance modules in miniature. Weird. Now, what do we have here all wrapped up? Uh, it feels like some boxes. What do we have? Oh, look! It's... Star Frontiers. Star Frontiers by TSI, who made D&D. This was their science fiction role-playing game. And um, very exciting stuff when it came out. It came out with lots of cardboard chits and a module. Star Spawn of Volturnus. Volturnus Planet of Mystery was another module. Actually, that was the second module. That was the one that came with the original set. And here it was. And... There were just so many role-playing games coming out in these days. D&D was hugely successful and companies churned out role-playing games about all kinds of themes. There you go. It's a bit of an article from Dragon Magazine there. So if that's Star Frontiers, then under here must be... Look at... Oh, look. Bought 1983, Napoleon's Military Bookshop. $18. $18 Australian that cost me in 1983. That was probably a lot of money. Okay. This is Nighthawks, which was uh, rules for starship combat, which I, I never got around to playing, I don't think. So. There's some modules shoved in here as well. It's a rules of campaign book, operations manual, maps, a lot of stuff that was never actually play but I played the role-playing game quite a lot it was a lot of fun and something very different and exciting when the only thing that had been out was fantasy of D&D. In fact talking about Star Frontiers here's a couple of sets by TSR of metal miniatures that came out around that time there was some spacecraft and some player characters and oh look at that there was even some monsters it's some kind of reptilian creature and um, here are the uh, sort of wormy guys, the Sethar, who were the bad guys. Yep, this is how miniatures used to come, in metal, no funny bases. These guys were great, they were like 
animated blobs that could form themselves into any shape. Check out these metal spaceships. Wow. Quite retro. These were the ships of the Sethar, who are the bad guys again. And as you can see, I've never got around to painting these up. But they're quite cool. Here's a role playing game that I've never played, but has always appealed to me because it was the creation of uh, a guy who was a fantastic artist and did this beautiful artwork. It's called Sky Realms of Jeroen. And he did these beautiful uh, pencil illustrations. And, gee, it's looking a little bit damaged. It's a companion book. It's an extra book as well. Um, and this was all set on a world called Jeroen or Jeroen. And look at those illustrations. Beautiful. It's quite original stuff. Lovely world building. And look, floating islands long before. In fact, it's, it's actually quite a lot of um, avatar influence in these. Floating islands, people riding on um, flying creatures. I wonder if James Cameron got a few ideas from this game. Now, what do we have wrapped up in here? Oh, look, another classic. Another one of my all-time favourites, Gamma World. This was set in a post-apocalyptic world, again by TSR, who did such great stuff back then. And look at that evocative cover. Brilliant. So this is the original set. And in fact, I've got two copies of this. Somewhere along the line, I scored a second copy. One of them's in a bit better condition, so this is probably my original here. Oh, and I've put some Gamworld modules in there. And you can see, back in the day, I was creating modular hex terrain of my own invention. And, uh, oh, look, here's another map. See, back in these days, you had to come up with stuff yourself. You didn't just get modules and everything. You had to invent everything. Back in my day. So here's a map that I made. Did a lot for Gamma World. We used to play it a lot, a lot of fun. In fact, oh, look at the detail of this wheel. This is uh, obviously some kind of spaceship cockpit or fighter plane cockpit. We used to create these and then when the players would go into them, they'd fiddle with the buttons and say, I oh, press that. And you'd say, you press the ejector button and you get shot out of it. So this was obviously all part of some campaign I was playing. I'm really glad I preserved all these old things because it really takes me back. You can see I was a graphic designer from an early age. Oh, there's heaps of stuff in here. I was designing character sheets when I was a kid. And there's the original map that came with the, with the game, which was obscure to the point of ridiculousness. There it is. It didn't give you much. Just a whole lot of hexes. And there's the original rule book. And just not very big rule book, but gee, there was a lot of gaming fun squeezed into this little book. These were the original charts to see if something you discovered of the old tech would blow up or be useful. Monsters. Not a whole lot of illustration in there either, but it was very exciting at the time. Just wall to wall text. Gamma World. Now, I've got some. Later editions, and this one, I think this was the second edition of the game. Things are getting a bit more fancy, a bit more professional. More modules in there. I think I've got all the Gamma World modules. There's the original book, adventure booklet, and there was a color map as well. Gamma World, great game. Here's another classic that old timers will recognize, Paranoia, the original edition of that game by West End Games, and uh, a darkly humorous future. Yes, it's all about a sort of dystopian society where the computers are in control, very 1984 sci-fi. Every game usually uh, devolved into um, a paranoid killing of all the characters by each other. Um, very funny. 
funny game and very weird. Look at all those charts and bright colours. Uh, this is a lot of accessory packs and modules all shoved into the original box. Look this. Uh, this game even came with forms you could fill out in triplicate and <laughs> carbon copies and all the rest of it to reflect the crazy society of the paranoia world. R&D experimental equipment testing report form. Because I'm the computer, that's why. Well, this is really taking it back to the original. It's the original Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not sure which print this is. I think it's around the fifth print. Um, it's not the wood grain box, but uh, the later white box. Um, there's the Blackmore su supplement. Here are the original books. Men and Magic. Monsters and Treasure. And the Underworld and Wilderness, Wilderness Adventures. And uh, this was around 1975, a little bit before my time. I started gaming in 78, so I didn't buy this at the time. Um, the basic set was already out that I've already showed you. Um, but I did buy this set sometime later because I felt that I really needed to have the original D&D. I did buy this at the time, however, which is the original Gods, Demigods and Heroes supplement. Um, so I never used it, but I did buy that. Um, so it's good to have the old original D&D. Good to have a copy of it. That's where it all started. And finally, this is the first bit of gaming paraphernalia that I ever had. This is my photocopy of Empire of the Petal Throne. Um, whoops, pirated my copy way back then when I was 12. I couldn't afford the original edition at the time. It was so expensive, it was probably like $25 or something. Maybe even more. Crazy money. So um, I photocopied my friend's copy. He was very nice and let me do a copy of it. I even photocopied the maps and stitched them together. So just black and white versions. And this was very exciting. And the funny thing here is, look at this. This is the old shiny photocopy paper. Um, some of this is normal paper, but also in those days, you had these horrible shiny photocopies you could make in school. Yeah, they were horrible. Uh, I put it into this ring binder and I just thought this was absolutely magical. And I tell you, there's a lot of reading here for a 12 year old and it's not written for a 12 year old either. It's quite advanced language. And I think the way these early role playing games were written really forced you to um, have a pretty good working knowledge of the English, la English language. And I think it uh, improved my education a bit because it forced me to get into all this. But of course, not all kids love this kind of thing for fun, but D&D um, &D and all its role-playing games like that were so popular back then that obviously there was a huge market for it. So this is very, very special for me. Um, still got it. So not something that I bought, but I made myself, and uh, that's where it all started. 1978, 12 years old. And here I am, almost 40 years later, and the gaming collection has got absolutely huge and almost out of hand. That's it folks, the joy of unpacking, here's a little sneak preview on the shelves and I'll show you more about that when I've got it all finally set up and the collection is all sitting in the places that it should be sitting. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate the feedback. I will do a last closer of the joy of unpacking when I come back and show you where they all ended up. Until then, thanks for watching.